Good morning. Welcome to First Congregational Church of Prescott. Wherever you are this morning, whether you're in New England, in California, or here in Prescott, or in Florida, or somewhere else in this great world, we welcome you to this time of worship. Everyone is welcome to worship with us. It doesn't matter who you are, or where you come from, or where you're starting from. Wherever you are on the road, you're welcome to worship with us. Let us worship God. Embracing is the opposite of always going somewhere else. We are part of God's creation. It's in our DNA. And as the psalmist says, the rocks and the trees praise God just by being who they are. And we are to do the same. It is really freeing just to be. Let us worship God and be free. And please join me in our call to worship. God whose fingers sculpt our world and the people respond and curl the baby's ear. Spirit brooding over chaos until bright day is born and the people respond. Come again to us this day and brood above our mess, and the people respond until our houses are refreshed and light replaces darkest night. Testament reading today is from the book of Genesis 1, 1 through 5. I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was formless and void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, 
See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth and to every bird of the air and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day. He rested from all the work that he had done, so God blessed the seventh day, and he hallowed it. He held it because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. I would like you for a moment to, if you have children in your home, that you would call them to the monitor because I would like to talk with them for a moment. I can't wait long. I'm on a schedule. Okay, here we go. Hello. Children, this is a uh, bucket of Kentucky Fried Chicken. Everybody likes Kentucky Fried Chicken, so we're going to go and we'll dig right in, right? Because that's what Kentucky Fried Chicken is for. What? What? There's dirt in here. That's not Kentucky Fried Chicken, that's dirt. That wasn't very nice. No, it's not nice, is it? Uh Uh-uh, because you're supposed to have chicken in here, fried chicken. So what are we going to do? Well, let let me help you think about this. What if you were a Kentucky Fried Chicken bucket and you loved Jesus? But when people came to you, you were mean to them. It would be like reaching into a Kentucky Fried Chicken bucket and getting dirt. Ah, That's terrible. So, if you love Jesus, that means you do have Kentucky Fried Chicken in your bucket. So that everyone that meets you knows that you love Jesus, and that you love them. Thank you for listening to me. You can go back and play. Come back to me with all your heart. Don't let fear
Our New Testament reading today is from the book of Luke, chapter 11, verses 24 through 26. When the unclean spirit had gone out of a person, it wanders through waterless regions looking for a resting place. But not finding any, it says, I will return to my house from which I came. When it does, it finds it swept and put in order. Then it goes and brings seven other spirits, more evil than itself, and they enter and live there, and the last state of that person is worse than the first. This morning, Wendy read for us the creation story. And in the creation story, after God had created out of nothing, the world and all of his creatures, the sun, light, then after seven days, after creating us, then he took a Sabbath, he took a rest, like our pastor is doing now by taking three months off to restore his soul. And we, as the parishioners, need to understand that a Sabbath is crucial for all of us. We need a time of rest and restoration and wholeness. I sometimes believe that the creation story has many very strong points, but one of the main ones is that God, God takes a sabbatical. The perfect one, the all-knowing one, the all-powerful one, the one who cannot sin, the one who is and was and shall ever be, takes a sabbatical. That's pretty astounding. So we are going to think about what it means to take a time of restoration, to return over and over to a moment after hard work and many difficulties, how to take a sabbatical. I want you to know that I love to hike. And uh, I have a little story I want to just stick in here before I get to the main point, and that is that uh, many times during the pandemic I've been on the trails, walking in the National Forest. And often there's people that just aren't thinking, and I want them to, you know, stay away, not to get close to me. So when they're walking right towards me, I'll holler out, Sir, could you please give me six feet? And most people are accommodating, some are, what are you talking about? Depending on how they feel about this pandemic, but one day when my mind was completely gone and I really wasn't thinking clearly and I saw a man coming towards me, I carelessly said, Sir, will you please give me six inches? To which he replied with a great big smile, Hey, I'll give you eight inches. So there are many things that are changing in our world, but one that I think is the most important is that no matter how many trials and changes the world has, we need to return to God daily with a rhythm. Another time when I was hiking, just a short time ago, I was going to take this two-mile loop and I left a note for my wife and told her I'd be back in two hours. So after I'd been hiking for about an hour, I couldn't find a loop. There was no loop. And so I stood there and I decided that uh, I knew where the car was, that it was directly east, and I pulled out my phone and, and brought up my compass app and just started following the trail that was going east. Three hours later, I was back where I started, where I decided to go on this east trail with my feet bleeding, no water left, and my pride completely gone because I don't get lost. And so then I said to myself as I looked over to my right, that was where I came from when I got lost. If I just followed that trail back, I'd get me back to the car. 
the by returning the way I came. I got home. Five hours later, yes, not two, with a wife that was in a frenzy. But I got home. I got to my car. I got to see my wife and have her take care of me. And I had refreshment, restoration, because I returned the way I came. For you and I, so many times in our life we get off and we just keep going and keep going when we really need to turn around and trace back. Trace back to where we know the one who refreshes us is. We can always go back. We can always return. All through the Bible there are passages about this kind of thing beginning with Joseph when he very deceptively uh, got his brothers who had imprisoned him and thrown him into a pit to come so that they could get food for, for their whole family. And he revealed himself to them, not for retribution, but for forgiveness. To bring them into the fold again, to return to love. Joseph is a Jesus figure in the Old Testament. The prodigal son returning to his father, tracing back after being so lost. And Peter, after the resurrection, deciding to go back to be a fisherman because, hey, he had failed as a disciple of Christ. He, in the Lord's darkest hour, had, had betrayed him three times. And so he knew how to fish. He didn't think he knew how to be a servant of Jesus. But Jesus returned to him on the beach while he was fishing with, with others. And Peter saw him and he pulled up his nets and he went to him. He returned back to Jesus. And he told Jesus, I do love you, I do love you, I do love you. It's only when we are refreshed by the presence of God that we can say that. And then Jesus, not too long after that, began to prepare for the ascension. And he asked all 120 disciples to be there as he ascended. And what he said to them was, Return to where you were until you receive the Holy Spirit. These confused people, not knowing what in the world was going on, were turn, return, return. If you're confused, return. So they returned to the safest place they had known, the upper room where the Lord had served them the last meal that they had with him before he was crucified. And there they confessed to each other, they talked with each other, they shared, they supported, they prayed, they gave confessions of the things that they shouldn't have done, they, they asked God for forgiveness. There were many beautiful things that happened in that upper room until the day that the tongues of flame came down on all 120, not just on Peter, not just on the disciples, but on all 120 as the flame comes on anyone who comes back to God. And I want you to know that this flame <clears throat> is not like the flame that Moses saw in the Old Testament where, where a bush is burning and God is in the bush and Moses is standing away from the bush and getting instructions from God. When the flame comes upon every one of these disciples and upon us we become the burning bush we become the one who is the light that brings hope brings compassion brings love to the situations that we see and when that ceases to be for us we know it's time to return and get cleaned up restored made whole, 
One of the most difficult things about this pandemic has been the closing of all the restaurants. Restaurant means a place to have restoration, to have wholeness. And restaurants we know are important now that we haven't been able to go to them for a while. We really appreciate them. And we're called here today to do the same in the world that we're seeing about us. I do not believe that any Christian who has seen George Floyd being pushed into the concrete cannot have compassion for him, cannot feel pain. If God is alive in us, we have compassion. We have love for those, no matter who they are. And we also have love for policemen who see that picture and are ashamed because they know that is not what they're doing. They're peacemakers, they're guardians for all the people that they serve. We need to say we care. One of the demonstrators that I saw had a sign and it said this, you ask me why I care. I ask you why you don't. That is the question that we all should be asking. If we don't care, it's, it's a Sabbath we need. We need a Sabbath, a time of restoration. The New Testament passage that Wendy read was about uh, the house that had been cleansed of all the evil spirits. And then it was just left clean. And so the evil spirits came back and said, hey, this is better than ever. Let's, let's get a whole bunch more. And the person was worse off than before. If we don't continually come back for a cleanup job, continually come back for restoration to the feet of Jesus, we cannot have the spirit burning live within us filled with compassion and love and understanding. So let us return and return and return so that our Sabbaths make us whole, so that we can be still and know God. I'd like to take a moment just to invite all of you to join us for communion. And if you would like to go to your kitchen and get a piece of bread and, and some kind of uh, juice or other drink that uh, you would use for this communion, I invite you to do that now as we have our confession. After each phrase, I invite you to silently offer before God the confessions of your heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear then Christ's words of grace to us. Your sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. I invite you to this table. It doesn't matter who you are. In the words of the singer Crowder, so lay down your burdens, lay down your shame. All who are broken, lift up your face. O oh, wanderer, come home. You're not too far. So lay down your hurt, lay down your heart. Come as you are. Come as you are. Come.
as you are. On the last night that our Lord was here on earth in the flesh, he took the cup and he took the bread and he blessed it. Oh Lord, we thank you that even though we're not gathered in this room in one place, that your spirit is present with us all and you make us one. In each of our homes, we know that we're thinking of those that we love so dearly who sit beside us year after year in this place of worship and the new people that have just started to come that we love so dearly and want to bless. <clears throat> and we ask, dear Lord, that in this communion time, that as we join with you, that we will know that we are joining with one another in this congregation and throughout the world with all Christians. We ask that you would bless this bread and this cup for your glory. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. And Jesus took the bread and he broke it. And he said to his disciples, this is my body, broken for you. And he took the bread and he said, take and eat. And after the bread, he took the cup. And he said, this is the new covenant. This is the cup of salvation, which is given to you. And he said, take and drink it, all of you. Blessed be the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love. Amen. Please join me now for the prayers of the people. Creator God, merciful and just, Help us as we find our rest and our peace in you. Not only this day, but each and every day. Help us to search our hearts, God. And to find if we have mercy and extend justice. And give us your peace. We pray. Amen. And now for the Lord's Prayer, please join me again. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now for the offering of ourselves and our gifts. Thank you for your ongoing support of the church. There are three ways that you can donate. Online, you can go to our website at www.fccprescott.org and look for the tab on the front. Secondly, you can use PayPal or BillPal through your own bank. And thirdly, you can mail your check into the church office. Our mission outreach donations for June will support two projects. Number one, Yavapai Food Bank. Yavapai Food Bank provides food boxes helping approximately 400 families a week. Additionally, through their Start Fair program, they will be providing school supplies for students K through 12. Second, our donations strengthen the church offering. 
Donations support new church development, creative ministries directed for youth, to spiritual development, and to projects engaging today's challenging issues. Please join me now in our prayer of dedication. Like the gifts of creation, we are but caretakers of all we possess. And like the gifts of creation, they are not to be hoarded, but shared with the hungry, the lonely, the lost, the struggling. As we offer our gifts, receive our thanks and praise in the name of Jesus. Amen. And now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon each and every one of you and give you 
peace. God's peace. Amen.